Hello and welcome back everyone to Nerdy Nekuma. Today we're gonna get started on a mini series called Trapped in the Past. Past? Oh my god, past. Um, it is an Aikawa and Kagiyama Inc. series, including and featuring the ships Daisuke Wai and Sugiyama Kagina. Though the focus will really be at Aikawa and Kagiyama. Yeah, I'm gonna bring up their middle school trauma. <laughs> Well, you all um, seemed enthusiastic about it when I shared this idea in the community post, so really, this is on you. Let's go! Out of all the places he could have ended up, why here? Out of all the people, why him? His breaths echoed loudly from the barren walls. He was panting, still gasping for air, and yet his whole body tensed. His back was pressed flatly against the cold stone wall behind him, while his nails stuck further into the flesh of his palms. His eyes bore into the curled up figure opposite to him. Why him? Hinata? Suga spotted the spiker as the people were gathered outside as soon as they were cleared to go. An earthquake had shaken the area, and with it the gym, just a few minutes after the game had ended. The paramedics attending to ensure the player's well-being were now attending to the few injured during the event, and along with the security helped getting everything into order, while the building was inspected and people were assigned to safe spaces in case of aftershocks or damage to various parts of the structure, leading to debris. It was going smoothly for the most part. They all had been coached and instructed in how to behave in instances like these since kindergarten, and it was a mild earthquake, causing very little panic to actually arise. Yet, when it was over and the civ had searched the crowd for his boyfriend, who previously had left to get some fresh air and found that he was nowhere to be seen, he felt his chest constrict. Iwazumi was still down by the court with his colleagues and helped organizing the aftermath of the incident, as did Daichi who automatically slipped into his role of the police officer at the first signs of distress. It was Toto he couldn't find no matter how much he searched and looked for him. Have you seen Toto? I can't find him. The spiker set off to the side with some of his teammates. They were instructed to wait for further instructions and updates on the situation, but he hoped since they had been by the entry to the hallway the whole time, they might know more. His hope was quickly dispersed when the other shook his head. I'm sorry, I haven't. I know that Toby wanted to talk to him, but... His eyes widened slightly as if realizing something and began searching the crowd as Suga had before. From across the court, he caught Yamaguchi and Tsukishima rushing over to them. Guys, where's Tobio? The smaller visibly paled a few shades and began to fumble with his sleeves. We thought he might be with you. You haven't seen him? Not since it started. If he wanted to talk with Toru, I'm sure they're fine, right? They probably search for cover outside or in the hallways. Hinata looked at him in concern, but nodded slowly. He seemed a little shaken by the whole event, and Suga couldn't blame him. It came rather suddenly, despite the usually accurate warning system. They had barely minutes to react and prepare. Tobio doesn't have his phone with him. What if the warning didn't reach him? Yamaguchi paled further, and Hinata began chewing on his lip nervously. Toto does, so if they were together at the time of... Hey, Sho, what are you doing? Ansem had grabbed Hinata by his wrist as the smaller attempted to get up. He held him in place and frowned. Not a chance. Sit down again before the coach catches you. I have to help find them. 
Not like that, you don't. What happened? Tsukishima inspected the spiker with a newfound concern and kneeled down in front of him. Nothing bad, I just... He sprained his ankle. It was mid-jump when the warning came. An embarrassed blush spread on Hinata's cheeks and he huffed annoyed. I just overstretched it a little. It's hardly that bad. I can still help looking for him. I'll be careful. Hinata, if you're injured, you should rest. We'll find them. He tried sounding reassuring, but his own worry tainted his voice, yet Yamaguchi quickly jumped in to help. He's right. You would only risk making it worse. Toby wouldn't want that. We'll find him, don't worry. He quickly pressed a kiss to Hinata's cheek before rushing off to where most of the Adlers had settled to see if they knew more. Suga watched them briefly with scanning the crowd once more, but still, there was no signs of the setters. At least Kageyama should have stood out in his jersey, but the only Adlers jerseys he saw were gathered in the direction Yamaguchi had taken. He pulled out his phone again, only to find that it was still out of service. Sadly, not an uncommon side effect of unfortunate events like these. When he looked up again, he caught Iwa's gaze. The trainer seemed briefly unoccupied and he quickly rushed over to discuss what to do next. Oikawa leaned against the wall in the hallway, staring at the ceiling. The game had just ended and while much of it lay in the past, he felt conflicted over seeing Kageyama and Ushiwaka on the court together. Tobias' talent had blossomed, no doubt. It didn't help seeing his boyfriend beaming with pride as he watched his former Kohei. It of course didn't surprise him. He wasn't mad at Suga Odaichi for supporting him. This was his issue, and his alone. He let out a drawn out sigh. What a mess. Oikawa? His body tensed at once as he slowly turned around to face him. Kagema stood at the end of the hallway, his usual grim expression on his face, though it was thrown off by a hint of pride and exhaustion at the game one, and something like uncertainty. For a moment, all they did was stare at each other, until Aikawa couldn't bear it anymore. His third constricted as his mind provided him with images of their time in middle school. He still recognized residuals of the same social awkwardness and naivety on Kageyama's face, but at the same time the absence of the innocent excitement he radiated back then was painful. Kageyama had been through his personal at Kidogawa Dochi, and as much as Okawa tried to hate him for his talent and the ugly sides it provoked within himself, he couldn't help but think that he could have prevented this. All he saw when he looked at Kageyama were his own failures, both in volleyball and as a senpai. What do you want, Tobio? He was taken aback by the harshness in his voice, and so was the other. He didn't react with his typical scowl, however, and that felt even worse. I just wanted to talk to you. To uh, make fun of me? Glowed about your victory. <sighs> he hated himself right now. He hated how vicious the words were, and even more that his voice became pathetically thin the longer they spoke. No. Just talk. And he hated him. He hated him for staying calm. The younger had faced the dark chasms within himself, Aikawa was too afraid to approach, and he hated and envied him for it. He always envied him. He quickly turned on his heels and rushed to the nearest door. Well, hate to burst your bubble, but not everybody wants to talk to you even when you're a big volleyball star. A half echoed behind him and he heard steps following after his. I don't care about that. 
The door fell shut behind them, and too late did Aikawa notice that this was not the way out, but some sort of small basement slash storage room. He sighed, his blood boiling as he realized that he'd have to turn around and walk past his former Kohai. All that came to a sudden stop when the earth beneath his feet began to shake. It quickly traveled up the walls and dread settled in his stomach. Quick, we need to... A loud crash echoed from the door and Oikawa felt as though his blood had been replaced by ice. He rushed back up the stairs and passed Kageyama, almost falling as the shaking increased, but when he reached the door, it wouldn't open. Something blocked it, and no matter how much he pushed, it wouldn't budge. He was panting when suddenly a hand closed around his arm. He had enough composure not to push Kageyama away. His jaw clenched and he held onto the railing with a vice grip. We need to get down from these stairs. Kageyama nodded shakily and they tried their best not to fall. The room wasn't big and got smaller as one of the shelves fell down with a loud crash. Yet, as soon as they reached the bottom of the steps, Oikawa recoiled from the touch and fled to one of the walls, cowering down and covering his neck and head. This was a nightmare. Kageyama understood it well enough to see Kava elsewhere in the room. Aikawa didn't know where until he looked up between the waves and found him opposite to him, curled up on the ground. The shaking traveled up and down his spine, and he flinched every time something crashed down either in the building above them or from the shelves. He pressed his eyes shut in hopes this would end as swiftly as it began. This was a nightmare. Still no luck. No, they don't seem to be in the hall. The teams are searching everywhere for them. We'll clear out the hall now. If they're in the crowd, we'll know. Where the F could they have gone to? They still have to be in the building. Anything else doesn't make sense. But where? With every minute passing without any sign of their partners, they became more restless. If they had just remained in their hiding spot for cover, they'd come out soon, right? The earthquake was over. Why weren't they here yet? I'll check the bathrooms once more. Shoyo, stay here in case they return, and Tadashi. I'll check if they're injured and with the paramedics again. They quickly set into motion once more. Thank you so, so much for watching till the end. I really hope you liked it. Don't forget to, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Um, this will be a, approximately a three-part series. I'm really excited for the rest of it. I hope you enjoyed it so far. I really like coming back to Oikawa's and Kageyama's middle school drama. So yeah, we're gonna get started on that one. Sorry if the recording wasn't as good today. I don't know why exactly, but somehow I was not in the height of my abilities today. A special thanks as always goes out to my nerd Nekos. You are the absolute best and you support this channel so, so much. If you right now watching are not a nerd Neko yet, you might want to check that out. Click on the join button under this video. You get cool stuff like early access and prioritized comments. On the topic of comments, put me your favorite quote and or moment of today's video under the pinned comment. And here's more content. Check it out if you like. Now, enjoy and have a wonderful day. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.